Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today I want to tell you a little bit about how to start a food forest on the cheap. The best way to do this is rather than buying big full-size trees and shrubs and plants is to get seeds and cuttings from friends. It's a very, very easy way to get items for free that you can grow in your own garden. I have a bunch of pawpaw seeds that I'm going to be starting today. Pawpaw seeds need to be used fresh and stored in the refrigerator through the winter after you have harvested them. So when you harvest them out of the fruit, you remove all of the fruit off of the seed, put them into a Ziploc baggie with some peat moss that's been dampened so that they stay moist in your fridge so that they get cold stratification and are ready to be planted in the spring. So I'm going to be planting some pawpaw from fruit that I got from a friend. I'm going to be planting some other things as well that friends have sent me. So basically what I did is I put a post on Facebook. I said, does anybody have any seeds or cuttings of any fruit trees that they would be willing to share with me? And I got a huge response and a bunch of people have sent me some cuttings and some seeds and it didn't cost them anything but postage because these things are free. So look around you. When you're driving down the road and you see an old homestead that has fruit trees, ask them about getting cuttings. The, nine times out of ten, they don't even harvest the fruit off of that tree anyway, and they'd be glad to let you trim a few branches off. These are just some of the cuttings that I've been able to receive when I requested if anybody had any fruit cuttings I could get. And here we are, starting our own fruit orchard. We're preparing the area for our food forest right here in our vegetable garden. We decided the best location for our food was to be as close to everything else that we work with every day. One of the main principles of permaculture is using what you have and keeping things simple and easy and keeping your zones in the correct order. So having our orchard way back on the other side of our property, way on the other side where nobody ever goes, was not the best idea when we originally planted it. So we'll be moving whatever fruit trees have survived the deer damage up into this location with all of our understory fruit trees planted underneath them. So we're doing layers. We're gonna have some tall trees, some shrubs and bushes, some vines, and some ground, ground cover so that we have a perfect permaculture community growing in our garden. Now these won't just be fruit trees and bushes. We're also going to have comfrey and artichoke and all kinds of interesting things growing in that community to help keep it healthy and strong and thriving. It's important to keep in mind that every type of fruit has a different set of circumstances that it likes to grow by, whether it's from a cutting or seed. So make sure you research each one of those fruits that you're planning on starting from seed or cuttings to make sure that you're taking care of them properly. For instance, the pawpaw has to be kept wet and cold for a cold stratification. There are some seeds that are going to need to be soaked beforehand. There are some seeds that are going to need to be nicked and have their seed coat disturbed before you plant them. Some cuttings are easy to take and will do very well for you. Others have to be grafted onto a rootstock. So do a little bit of research about the plants that you're looking at starting before you begin to make sure that you get even more success in your garden. I also got some free pawpaw seeds from Kentucky State University. Anybody can get free seeds from the university as they have them available. So I will leave a link down below for more information on that so you can get your free pawpaw seeds to start your own pawpaw grove. All right, so I have almost completely filled my tray. This is a deep root. Always want to do deep root pots, especially for pawpaw because they have a tap root. I have then poked holes with my fingers to make it deeper. Pawpaw seeds like to be planted at least three inches deep. So I have soaked them in some water just to get them started this morning. And I'm just going to go ahead and put a seed in each one of these cells in hopes that they're all going to grow. I'm actually going to go ahead and 
double the seeds because I don't need this many pawpaws and um, some of them kind of have some spots on them that I'm curious if they may be a little bit damaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and double seed what I have left in this bag so that I'll have a fresh tray to plant my Kentucky seeds in. Any extra pawpaw plants that I will not be planting here, I can share with fellow gardeners in my area and make sure that you always remember that if you start a little bit extra, you can help spread the gardening movement with other gardeners by sharing your extra plants. That's something I really stress and try to do as much as possible. I've had so many people share their plants with me and I try to pay it forward by sharing plants with other gardeners in my area. Some of these could possibly even be shipped if I am really careful. So that almost doubled the entire seed tray. Actually, I think it's going to just about only going to be shy a few cells. So that's going to be good to go. I'm going to cover, fill the cells the rest of the way up, water it in, and I'm going to put it outside. It is good for pawpaw seeds to be in the cold and they will germinate as the temperatures warm up and they can take a while to germinate so i'll just have to be patient get some rainwater we've collected to water them in and we're good to go. I'm just gonna leave them and let the mother nature take care of them from here. got my warm temperature things that I am planting in this tray so I've got some goji berry from a friend some moringa from a seed swap and some hearty orange that I got from Baker Creek and I just opened it up and look they're already sprouting so I'm gonna have to be very careful with those so I don't break off any of those little tiny babies so here we are with all of our seeds sown, watered in, all of our cuttings growing. This is how you start a food forest. I have a big huge thank you to the friends that have sent us seeds and cuttings and allowed us to get this started and I will be sharing seeds and cuttings in the future with more and more people. I hope that this has inspired you to start your own food forest using free things that you can get from friends, neighbors, I mean really anywhere. You can even post on Facebook in some of the marketplaces and there's lots of people who are willing to give away these things for free. So don't stop looking and don't stop growing. Keep up the good work and we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.